Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tennessee Virtual College Fair. Thanks so much for joining us today. While I give our attendees a few seconds to kind of stroll in, I'm just going to run through a couple housekeeping announcements before we get started. As attendees, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your end as attendees, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot hear or see you. The only way to get your questions asked and answered is through that Q&A box. So again, feel free to use that at any time throughout the presentation. This is just one of many different sessions happening today, so please be sure to sign up for additional ones afterwards. And this presentation is being recorded and will be made available within about a week at the same website where you registered. So with all that out of the way, I'd like to turn it over to our presenters, starting first with Austin P. State University. Hello, how are you guys today? Um, so, my name is Trotter, I'm from Austin P. State University. Um, I'm gonna be showing you a brief presentation. Okay, so Austin P has just over 11,000 students. Um, that gives us a number exactly to 11,048. We have the highest safety level ranking from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Um, just mean we are the safest college in the state of Tennessee. We have over 50 majors, and with those 50 majors, are about 60 concentrations. There's 168 student organizations. Um, these range from the Harry Potter Club all the way to fraternities and sororities. Um, class size averages 21, so your class sizes can be very, very hands-on or open dialogue depending on your major or in which specific course you're going into. To get into the university, you need a 2.85 GPA or a 20 on your ACT. Um, the way we make it work is as long as you do not test in the remedial category, which for us would be a 13 or below, on your social scores in your ACT, we can get you in solely off of your GPA. Scholarships. So the scholarships, um, the admission scholarships, we're gonna talk about those a little later. General scholarships. So what general scholarship for us means is donor to the university or the uh, major within the programs. So I'm um, different majors around campus. Each department has their own scholarships. You can find those at apsu.edu slash scholarships. And then of course, your FAFSA that comes in every year that's very, very important opening on October the 1st. So these are admissions application merit-based scholarships. So these scholarships start at a 3.5 and a 22. You can get $2,000 and that's our achievement scholarship. And then you have a 3.0 and a 26 which is our Dean Scholarship, which is $4,000, and then the 3.0 and the 30 gets you 6,000. So right there, it says 75 service hours. So those service hours can be done throughout the whole semester. It's just whenever you find time to do them, we don't require you to work a certain amount per week or anything like that. Whenever you find the time to get your 75 hours in, you just have to turn those in at the end of every semester. So another scholarship that we have is called the PELP scholarship. So what PELP stands for is President's Emerging Leaders Program. And what that program does is um, it is part of the honors college. So that's why the requirement is a 3.5 and a 26. You can be in our honors program. And within that program, their deadline is set for the 31st because then you will have to interview to join the PELP program. So what does it cost to come to Austin P? So Austin P costs around 20,000 a year for an in-state student. And I tell you that 20,000, because I give you that $500 cushion for your books. Um, also because our semester tuition and fees is at 12 credit hours. And 12 credit hours is always important to take as you will have to make sure that you're a full-time student in order to get your FAFSA money. Housing and meal plans. The housing and meal plan price is a top dollar price. So that means you picked our most expensive meal plan and our most expensive housing option. So that price can actually lower. So that 20,000 range could also drop down to like 18, 19, 17, just depending on which housing option you pick or if you don't stay on campus at all. As far as staying on campus, it is very important that you just remember that on December the 31st, if you have applied that you do at some point, go in there and try and register for housing because that 31st deadline is the very first time that we're counting bed spaces 
for the upcoming fall. And then your $100 prepayment needs to be submitted uh, as early as March 1st. And after March 1st, they will throw, they pretty much will put your money. If you have not paid the $100 prepayment, you'll lose your room spot. So it's imperative that you get that $100 prepayment in before March the 1st. But if you do decide not to come to Austin P after March the 1st, as long as you let us know prior to July the 1st, we can give you your $100 prepayment back. And then freshman residence requirements. So if any of you guys are from 50 miles away or more, you have to stay on campus your freshman year. And then right here, it just has a couple of our campus uh, traditions, which you can see the mud ball, which is right here. It's a 48, um, 48 to 50 team uh, tournament in the mud. And then you also have ghost and ghost is just a trick or treating, trunk or treat thing that we do for our school. The polar plunge is when we tarp over our outdoor pool in the winter and we untarp it the first day of spring and we let students jump into the ice cold pool. So that's why we call it the polar plunge. Um, and then the color run, the color run is this picture right here. It's just a 5K marathon around our campus where you can run through different powder paint stations and just get dirty, I guess. Um, it's the best way to explain it. Um, and then the spirit rock, that's a new addition to campus on um, different organizations. Um, different students just all together can go and paint their rock with the permission of our student engagement office. You can paint pretty much that something that is welcoming onto that rock. And then our homecoming, homecoming is amazing. Um, we're doing it in March this upcoming year. So you guys should come out. Okay, great. Let me share my screen and we will now move on to Suwani. Hi everybody, um, my name is Sarah Butler and I'm the Associate Director of Admission at Suwani and um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about our school. Uh, we are located on top of the Cumberland Plateau between Chattanooga and Nashville. Um, we are a small liberal arts school with about 1,700 students from 44 states and 30 different countries. Hey, Sarah, just wanted to let you know your screen isn't shared. Oh, it isn't? No, I hmm. just need to redo that one. All right, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to let you know early. All right, let's try this again. Share the screen. Hmm. I'm sorry, everybody, I'm eating into your time. Hmm. Awesome. <laughs> Can All you right. see it now? Yep, we see the PowerPoint, yep. Okay, great. All right, um, so our undergraduate enrollment is about 50% male and 50% female, and 18% of our students are students of color. Uh, about a third of our students are student athletes, and the first year freshman class was about 533 students. Um, as I mentioned before, we're a small liberal arts school, which means that this is the kind of school where you don't need to de declare your major coming in as a freshman. Um, we want you to come in with an idea of what you're going to do, but we want you to um, be exposed to a little bit of everything and um, you know we're looking for the well rounded students so when you come in as a freshman you're kind of working on core requirements. You declare your major your second semester of your sophomore year, um, we have 38 majors 44 minors and five pre professional programs. The student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1. Um, the average class size is 17 students and they're all taught by professors so there's no TAs. There's a lot of opportunities inside of the classroom, but there's also a lot of opportunities outside of the classroom. Um, we have, uh, we're a division three school with 24 varsity sports. Um, we have an outing program, we have theater, we have um, a movie theater, we have Greek life, um, you name it, we've got it. Uh, but these are all things that all these, all the schools that are here tonight will be able to offer you. They're all gonna offer you an ex excellent education. So I'm here to tell you the things that may be a little bit different than um, some of the other schools. You know, what makes us unique? What, what makes us maybe a good fit for you? So the first thing is that we have this amazing campus. Um, we have the second largest campus in the United States. It has 13,000 acres. It's kind of like going to school in the middle of a national park. Um, we have 14 lakes. We have 15 caves. We have over 60 miles of trails. Um, and not only is it fantastic recreationally, there's a lot of opportunities um, to have our domain used as an outdoor classroom. So if you do come to Swanee, chances are you'll be taking a class and you'll be using the domain as a classroom, either in the sciences or maybe in art class. Another thing that's kind of unique about us is that we have um, our 
college is the town. It's 3,500 people, including the student body. So our vice chancellor, which is our president, is the town's mayor. Um, the fire department is staffed by students along with community members. Um, the coffee shop is run by uh, students. The movie theater is run by students. The elementary school has students. So if you're looking to be more than just a student, but a citizen of the community, Swanee may be a great fit for you. Um, this is one of our theme houses. Uh, we have uh, 14 different theme houses and they uh, throw community events. This is the Healthy Hut and they worked with the farm to do a farm to table event. Um, this is an athletic event where the um, students in the community come together and um, celebrate our teams. Um, in terms of the application process, you apply to Swanee through the common application. It's free to apply and um, there's no supplement. Uh, we'll be looking at your high school transcript. Um, we are looking for A's and B's. The average GPA coming in is 3.7. Um, the mid-range for the ACT is 28 to 30, and the mid-range for the SAT is 1270 to 1360. Uh, we are also a test optional school, so if you feel like your grades don't represent your ability in the classroom, you can choose to apply test optional. Um, we'll be looking at your extracurriculars. We want to bring good citizens to the community. What is it that you have to contribute to Swanee, and what is it that we have to contribute to you? Um, and then the essay is uh, the essay that's on the Common App. In terms of deadlines, we have an early decision deadline that's November 15th. Early action is December 1st. Early decision two is January 15th. February 1st is our regular decision. Whatever round you apply to, um, your FAFSA and your CSS profile need to be in at that time as well. We are a school that meets full need. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to make it work for you financially. So that's all I have. Thank you so much um, for bearing with my <laughs> technical difficulties. And if you have any questions, let me know. Great, thanks so much. I will- Thank you, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. I'll share the schedule again. And next we're gonna move on to Treveka. All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jared Austin. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Trevecca, and we are a Christian university right here in the heart of downtown Nashville. So Trevecca features uh, just over 90 programs here on campus, um, lots of different majors that students are finding interest in. Uh, currently we have um, math and science bringing in the most students, uh, biology, nursing. Uh, second uh, would be uh, music and our business programs. Um, lots of internship opportunities for our students here in Nashville. We really strive to capitalize on being right here in the city, uh, have a really good career and counseling center that interviews returning interns so we can really keep a good short list of uh, different businesses and organizations treating our interns well and giving them relevant um, experience to put on a resume once they finish up. So um, currently we have right at around 4,000 students on campus. Um, inside that number, about 1,900 are traditional undergraduates. Uh, about 1,000 of those students are residents with us. Uh, roughly eight, 900 are commuting in from the Middle Tennessee area. So we have a 20 to one student to teacher ratio. That's an average with our general education classes um, going as high as about 40 students. And then the core major classes condensing down oftentimes into less than, you know, 12, 10 students. Um, so lots of opportunities for research for our students, um, regardless of, you know, which school or department or major that you're looking into being a smaller school, that's part of the academic investment that's returned to you is getting to be more involved, you know, with your professor um, and, and different research opportunities. Um, here are just some examples of where students have um, participated in internships here in Nashville recently, um, whether it be through our physics program or music business program, um, the nursing major, uh, sports management, connecting to the Titans and the Predators and the Sounds, um, the Bachelor of Business Administration, uh, their concentration in accounting um, has sent some interns to some of the, the better corporations, uh, the better firms here in the Nashville area. And so again, we just really strive to um, have that a part of the bachelor degree path 
and hope that helps students um, with job placement uh, upon finishing their bachelor degree. Um, lots of fun on campus. Um, as I said, about a thousand students live on campus. Um, annually, we enroll around 400 freshmen. Uh, we have over 30 states represented each year with students coming in. So we definitely believe there's a community here for students to engage with and everybody's not packing up and going home on the weekend. So um, the highlight really for the year is the welcome week, first week of class, late August, early September. Students are having an event going on um, every night so that they can, you know, meet their classmates and get excited about a semester long um, series of events, both on and off campus, um, you know, not only on campus, but, but in the Nashville area. Um, we do really strive to be affordable for students. You know, we just need four um, checkpoints working through admissions, um, the application transcript test score FAFSA uh, to really work on affordability. Um, as I said, a lot of students are commuting in from the middle Tennessee area, but if students want to live on campus, then that enables us to hopefully um, work a little harder on their financial aid package to make the numbers work. Uh, of course, we're a private institution, but we do look to pull in any federal or state aid options once that FAFSA links up to really you know, personalize the experience and help families um, through the numbers. Um, athletically, uh, we're NCAA Division II, uh, 15 teams at the D2 level. Uh, we're currently adding uh, cheer and bowling this year. So we're as gradually adding some more teams um, since we have transitioned to NCAA Division II. Um, several uh, club sports on campus as well, ice hockey, um, ultimate frisbee, uh, and then just different club organizations as well, purple and white club, uh, big uh, kind of uh, fandom there with different students, you know, really turning out and supporting uh, the home games on campus, intramural sports as well for the students not looking for that, you know, extensive schedule, uh, you know, like the, the NCAA sports would require. Uh, free application online via trevecca.edu. We're also part of the Common App. Uh, test optional for 2021. So we're certainly help stu helping students through um, their best course of action um, towards uh, an academic scholarship, whether it's solely based on the GPA, uh, students coming from a public school or a private school, or looking at the combination of the GPA and the test score. We do super score for academic scholarship per processes you know, running through the April 2021 test date. So um, definitely helping students along through, you know, the various steps that they're in, in terms of application and reaching admit status, you know, in this fall semester. Um, and then uh, again, we talked about the, the FAFSA awarding. Um, we are here uh, daily for in-person visits and we have uh, two preview days coming up on a Saturday in October and November. So that's gonna do it for my time. Thanks a lot, guys. Great, thanks so much. Let me pull up the schedule one more time. And next we will move on to Illinois Wesleyan University. All right, good evening everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Starnes. I am a regional admission rep for Illinois Wesleyan. Um, I do live in Tennessee and East Tennessee actually, so it's always great uh, to be talking with students from the volunteer state. And definitely wanna get a chance to take, talk to you over the next few minutes about some of the things that make IW so unique and such a great opportunity um, and a little bit more of why we were recently ranked top 10 nationally among the schools and universities for job placement and even recently dubbed the hidden gem of the Midwest by college publications. So Illinois Westland, we've got about 1700 undergrads. So we are a smaller uh, liberal arts foundation school. We're about two and a half hours south of Chicago. So we're in Bloomington, Illinois. And so Bloomington itself has about 130,000 people in the community. So it's definitely not middle of nowhere America by any means. Still great size community. And of course, the large metropolitan areas nearby. Um, we have an 11 to one student teacher ratio, 16 average classroom size. So one thing you are not gonna get, you won't see the large um, lecture hall, stadium seating um, opportunity in a classroom. You are gonna get much smaller uh, classroom opportunities, a lot less lecture, more discussion uh, with your faculty and your peers. So that's one of the big things about choosing a smaller university is you're going to get those opportunities to work with your faculty one-on-one -on -one with your questions and also 
Uh, we do not have a grad school at our institution, so we are an undergrad only college. So you actually don't have to worry about any grad students competing for opportunity. It's all about the undergrad experience. So a lot of our students, um, usually about 25% are engaging in graduate level research. So if anyone's planning to get a grad school out there, this is truly gonna be the opportunity that you're gonna look for. No TAs teaching you a lab. It's gonna be your faculty and advisors along the way and mentors. So IWU is broken up into three main colleges. We have our College of Fine Arts. So if any theater, um, we have national renowned theater programs or music or art students. Um, we, even though we are liberal arts founded, we have incredible fine art opportunities, uh, both professional and your standard Bachelor of Art degree. Uh, we have a BSN direct admit into nursing almost two decades of job placement. There's incredible results on that side. And then we have our general college of liberal arts that contain the majority of our majors, um, everything from a pre-med track to neuroscience, psychology, physics, astrophysics concentrations, our newest addition this year to just, and also of course a stellar business program. We just have so many different things that we can offer on the major minor combination side over 80 different majors. Um, so that's one of the things that really make us stand out compared to some of the other smaller private schools in the South. We do have a lot of variety um, at our institution and also too, um, just the success again that comes along with it. I tell everyone all the time, um, we think a lot like a large university with our resources, but we don't act like it because we don't have tens of thousands of students. Um, diversity, very big deal at our school. Um, two of our last three classes were the most diverse in the school's history. So we're taking a lot of pride in continuing to grow that. Um, of students of color, we have um, almost a third on our campus. Um, we even do everything from pre-orientation programs that are designed to make sure our students of color come and make sure they know they are uh, welcome on campus, uh, all resources available, know what their voice is on campus. It's just one to make it a very uh, friendly and welcoming environment to everyone. Um, and even, uh, you know, financially, we have first gen students on campus. Uh, we have high need uh, Pell students on campus. We want to make sure that, again, no matter what background you are, you are welcomed on our campus and to make it be a very successful opportunity for you as well. We have over 120 different uh, student organizations strong. We have Greek life with sororities and fraternities, very strong um, study abroad opportunities. Once we get some normal travel back into uh, the international realm, we have students typically on about every major continent around the world except for Antarctica. Um, so it's a very vibrant program, uh, with many opportunities on that side. Um, typically, uh, students will stay on campus for their first three years. Um, senior year is optional, so that way you will get the opportunity to be in one of our community style or suite style traditional residence halls. We have apartment style residence halls, uh, Greek life theme homes, theme houses, um, all fall under the uh, on-campus housing requirements. So we've got a lot of variety there. We are D3 and CAA. So if anyone is interested in playing sport, definitely feel free to reach out to our coaching staffs. We've got recruitment forms. We have eSports. So if any students are thinking about gaming at the collegiate level, check out some of our gaming opportunities that we have. So that way you potentially could get recruited if that's something that you would like. We have scholarships available for our eSports students. And as always, we have uh, very successful sports teams on our campus, 24 different sanctioned NCAA sanctioned sports. So we have a lot of fans, students come out and support our fellow Titans. We always wanna make sure our cost is affordable. So we uh, do everything we can to based on GPA and scores um, to get you a merit scholarship that is renewable. Those do go as high as $34,000. So even though again, we are a private school, do not hesitate um, to still apply. So over 95% of our students will receive financial aid. Our Common App, we are on the Common App and also our traditional application is free. So our app is open now. Early applications are rolling as we will have an early action period next month. So feel free to go ahead and apply and we will do everything we can to help you throughout the process. I will throw this out here real quickly. We are having a virtual open house next month on November 14th. We had our first one this past week, over 80 different students uh, in uh, attendance. So if you have any questions at all, my contact information's up here, email and phone. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you all have a great rest of the evening. Great, thanks so much. Let me share my schedule. And next we will move on to the University of Louisville. What's up everyone? Hey y'all. I'm not from the South, so I say guys a lot instead of y'all. Hey guys. 
L's up. Welcome to the University of Louisville. I'm going to touch on some of these topics briefly, give you a little feel for who we are and why students are interested in us. But I do know you're probably going to have questions. You're probably going to have questions for, you know, all the presenters, all of us admissions counselors. So please reach out to us if you do have any questions. This is my contact information on the screen. I do specifically work with students from Nashville, from Middle Tennessee. So reach out to me. I am your admissions counselor. So this is us. This is the University of Louisville. We are a public research institution in Louisville, Kentucky. So for a student that wants to jump on I-65, come up, we're 10 minutes south of the city. So right before you hit the city, you're going to hit our campus right here. And so what I like about this aerial shot of campus is it gives you that sense that we're kind of in a neighborhood. You know, even though we carry the name of the city of Louisville, you know, the biggest economic hub in Kentucky, we're not right downtown. We're 10 minutes removed. What I think is great for Tennessee students is this campus has no hills. It's flat, easy to get around. So you can get from point to point in 10 minutes. You're living on campus, you're learning on campus. If you wanted to bring a car to this campus, you could as a first time freshman student. It's not necessary though. Our students do have free access to the Louisville bus system with their student ID. We have the electric scooters to be popping around, but not just around campus but town, you know, going to different festivals, the Kroger, that's just a mile down the street if you need some quick groceries. So it's easy to get around on campus around the city. Um, and this slide is gonna tell you a little bit more about the numbers. You know, we're not that large of a school. So while we have a big name, the University of Louisville in, you know, that nice compact campus that we have only has around 12,000 full-time undergraduate students. I think we're that Goldilocks school. We're not too far from home. We're not too close. We're not too big, too small. And if you're you know, enjoying this accent, we do see a lot of students coming from out of state. And one of the largest out of state populations where we get is from the Chicagoland area. So that is where my accent is from. And if you like this accent, you're gonna be hearing more of this accent on our campus. So you know, you're looking at schools because you wanna study something. You wanna, you wanna take your knowledge and then go into the quote unquote real world. So these are the different schools and academic colleges that we have on campus, starting with the College of Arts and Sciences, which is the largest college, all the way down to the School of Public Health. We do have a med school and a law school and a dental school. So the pre-health track, you know, a lot of students wanting to do their pre-professional focuses before going to grad school. We see a lot of interest in that at the University of Louisville because students are able to get their internships, their job shadowing, they're able to do things either right on campus or you know, going out into the community. We had over 6,000 students utilizing our career centers on campus you know, to get that outside of the classroom learning on top of what they're getting through their academic major. I'm gonna strongly encourage you, I'm gonna touch on majors in a, you know, a little bit more, but I'm gonna strongly encourage you, Google, you know, take a look at the U of L catalog. If you put that into Google, you're gonna see all of our academic majors and minors use the catalog and the flight plan button, which is this button down here. Every major has it, and it's gonna show you a four year breakdown of what your potential class schedule is gonna look like at UofL. So these are you know, some more about our academic majors, what students are studying when they come to us. On the left-hand side, those are kind of unique majors, different majors. Uh, we are, you know, Louisville is the home of the Kentucky Derby. So if you're interested in equine business, it's part of the academic common market, and you can actually become an in-state students. So you get in-state tuition by joining the academic common market and being a part of our equine business major. On the right hand side, those are some of our, you know, bigger majors, more popular ones. We are kind of well known for our school of business, the school of engineering, nursing, sports administration, criminal justice. So, you know, the majors that you see on the screen are some of those big ones that we're known for. Your brains are going to be filled with a lot of knowledge. You're going to have to rest them though. You're going to have to fill your bellies too. So here's all the good eats that we have on campus. These are a part of your meal plan. And the stars indicate where you're living on campus. You do have to live on Louisville's campus for two years. So your freshman, sophomore year are living in one of the starred buildings. These are the starred buildings. You know, most students live in traditional style housing. There are three traditional style housing on campus. The suite and apartment styles, there's six or seven suite and apartment style for upperclassmen. So when you're making that transition from your freshman to your sophomore year, there are more suite and apartment style available to you. And yes, there are two halls that do have these pools in them. So pretty nice. If you want to just, if you don't want to live there, because it does cost more to live there, just make friends with somebody that's living there. 
All right, let's talk about, you know, the big kind of confusing applying and scholarships. And please reach out because this is ever changing for us and we're updating our website and we're constantly adding in, um, you know, because test optional is, we are test optional this year, it has, you know, changed the way that, you know, our normal policies work. So you can apply to us this year with test scores or without test scores. The way that admissions works at UofL is we first admit you to the university and then we admit you to your academic major. So depending on what your test scores are or your GPA, you might get into your academic major right away or you might be considered a pre-student. And that just means you have to do some prereqs in order to get admitted to that major. We do have some scholarships available. So there is no deadline for applying, but there are deadlines for scholarships. And these are the big deadlines for scholarships. So May 1st, if you're a student from, kind of from Nashville and the surrounding area, this is your scholarship to cut down the cost of attendance. If you're a student that's not from Davidson in the surrounding area, so you're some, some, from somewhere else in Middle Tennessee, you're eligible for our National Scholars Program to cut down that cost of attendance. That was my brief time here. L's up. Thanks, you know, cheers on as we take on Notre Dame on Saturday. Go Cards. Great, thanks so much. Pull up the schedule one last time. And lastly, we will move on to Murray State University. Hey guys, how are you? My name is Ivy Anderson. I am the lead admissions counselor here um, at Murray State University. Um, I am also a graduate of Murray State. So I bleed uh, gold and navy. Um, so I love talking to students about my alma mater. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Alrighty, so we have about 9,500 students on our campus, so we're still not considered a small um, university, but we're also not huge, and so we're a good sweet spot for a lot of students. Um, we have about 45 states that are represented in our student body, and then 50 countries as well, which we're really, really proud about. I love that about our campus. When I took my campus visit back in 2011. Um, I love that I was able to meet people from different cultures who spoke different languages and I could learn from all kinds of different people. Um, and then we have 143 different academic programs. Um, so that's majors, minors, and certificate programs. So we really wanna make sure that you're able to able to tailor your degree to what it is you're wanting to do after college. Um, I didn't say before, but we are located in Kentucky. So we are another Kentucky school. We're right across the Tennessee border um, in Murray, Kentucky. We're about two hours from Nashville area and three hours from my hometown of Memphis. So we're good in between to some major cities, but you still get a small town feel because Murray's a smaller area. We have 173 different student organizations on our campus and you can see the different types that are listed there at the bottom. Anything from Greek to residential uh, organizations, if you're really wanting to get involved in your major. Every single department has departmental um, organizations. That's something that I did when I was um, a student at Murray State. So lots of ways to get involved. I always tell students, no matter what school you decide to go to, get involved. That makes your four years or more uh, at <laughs> college a lot more fun. It gives you some purpose. Sometimes when you're on campus going to class every day, you kind of get bored of that. So it's really cool to be involved meet new people, all that. We do have 25 different intramural teams in sports. And um, so if you're not wanting to compete at the collegiate level, but still want to play your sport or get to know people in your residential college, um, we have that available to our students. And then we are an NCAA division one school. We love our sports on our campus. We especially love basketball. That's usually how students have heard of us. Um, so you can see the men's and women's sports. If you guys are interested in competing at the D1 level, um, then at goracers.com, that's our athletic website. We've got all our coaches information there. You can fill out an interest form and you can get film and stuff sent to them. All righty, so admission requirements. This year we have changed things up a little bit with COVID. So if you have a 3.0 GPA, we are test optional. You do not have to submit test scores with that admissions application. If you have below that, that's okay, still apply, um, but we do require a test score at that point, and that's that 18 on the ACT or 960 on the SAT. Um, you'll complete the application at mercy.edu. There's a bright blue apply today button. You'll click on that. Um, there is a $40 application fee that you'll submit. So once all that's in, um, then we will process your application. We'll send you something by email and then something um, by snail mail as well. Um, and then we can go ahead and get the rest of um, everything started. So you do have to be admitted in order to apply for scholarships. 
Um, so we have two different kinds, academic achievement and competitive. Academic achievement, you do not have to apply for. They are automatically awarded based off of your GPA and test score. Um, and then competitive, you do apply for. That can run the gamut from things you were involved in in high school, departmental scholarships, and then, of course, um, your run-of-the-mill merit scholarships. So um, at the bottom there, that grid is the academic achievement grid. So 21 on the ACT and a 3.0 will get you started on that grid at 1500 a year, all the way up to 100% of tuition potentially covered. Um, with that. And so that is a tuition only scholarship. So you'll still have housing um, and dining to pay for. We do have a two year housing requirement on our campus. Um, so then you can apply for our competitive scholarships and those will stack on top of your academic achievement scholarships. The application is open for our seniors. The deadline is February 1st. So we give you a ton of time to get that done. Once that is in, we let you know by mid March what you've been awarded um, from us. So there's lots of opportunities um, to get uh, a good chunk of your school, if not all of it, paid for at Murray State. Um, and then housing. Um, I love our housing on our campus. If you guys are familiar with Harry Potter at all, not everybody's into it, but I love Harry Potter. Um, and our housing system is set up very similarly to that. To that, So we have our own mascots, our own intramural sports teams, um, our own student government associations that we call our residential college councils. So lots of ways to get involved within your building and meet new people. Um, you have options. You can put your top six on that housing application as to where you want to live. Um, private bathrooms are going to be Clark, Richmond, and Franklin. Community styles, Hester and Elizabeth. And then you've got your suite style in Hart, Regents, White, and Springer, too. Um, housing is first come, first serve. So if you're really wanting to live um, in a couple buildings in particular, then get that in as soon as possible um so that that can go ahead and get processed and then here's some of the layouts here i wanted you guys to see that along with our family crests that we've got uh, for each building there at the top uh, all righty and then the last thing i want to say this is a picture of our quad it is the most beautiful spot on our campus in my humble opinion that is our football mascot racer one he runs around the track every time we score a touchdown at our football games um, so if you want to come see our campus, uh, we've got in-person and virtual visits available for our students. Um, so hop on murraystate.edu slash visit, um, and we can get you signed up for that. And then if you guys have any questions, here's my contact information here. I'm also on Instagram as well, and I will answer um, direct messages in there. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I thank you guys for um, your time. Great. Thanks so much. I will share my screen. And... To our attendees, now is a great time. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A feature now. We have about eight minutes or so left before the session ends. So if you do have questions, our reps would be more than happy to get those answered for you. If you don't have any questions, um, you are free to head out. After you close the window, there will be a quick four question survey that will appear. We'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to fill that out as we're always looking to make improvements to our programs. Uh, another reminder that this was one of the many sessions being hosted today and we do have about another session after this, so feel free to sign up for another one. And this reset, this session was recorded and will be made available within a few days on the same website where you registered. So I'm going to put myself on mute and turn my cam off for a minute or so to see if any questions roll in. Uh, so again, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A now. And to our reps, if any question comes in in the Q&A and you guys just want to answer it verbally, feel free to do so. Uh, just keep the answer pretty short so everyone else has the same amount of time. Uh, so I saw a question about uh, U of L and ROTC. So maybe some of the other schools can chime in about maybe our, any ROTCs. Yes, U of L does have an Army ROTC and an Air Force ROTC on campus. Yeah, if any of the other schools want to hop in, and if you do have an ROTC program, feel free. Um, Murray State does have, uh, we have Army ROTC that's available for our students. There's a question about Swanee and elementary education. So we have an education minor. We don't have an education major, but we have an education minor. So typically people will major in um, whatever interests them and then they'll, they'll do an education minor and they'll work in the classroom. Awesome, so we still have five minutes. So I'll pose a question for our reps. 
uh, just to kind of keep it, keep, you know, people interested. If each rep wants to just say what their favorite tradition is on campus, uh, if you could just keep it at 30 seconds or so, just talk about your favorite tradition so our students can get a bit of a feel for uh, other things on student life. But we could just go in the same order that we went. So Austin P, if you wanna mention your favorite tradition. There is a question about pre-vet programs. Um, so if anybody wants to jump in, U of L does have, you know, pre, and you can be any major, right? Pre-vet, pre-health, pre-med, any academic major, and you can be on that track. And yes, U of L does have that. If anybody else has pre-vet. Same with funny. Um, well, Austin P does have pre-vet. You can go either through agriculture or through our biology program. And we'll just make sure that you all have all of your prerequisites to get into your desired veterinarian school. Murray State also has um, a pre-vet program under uh, ag and under biology under our ag department. If you wanted to take a couple extra courses and get certified as a vet tech as well, we do have a dual program for that. Yeah, for Treveca, ours is through the Department of Math and Science pre-vet. Uh, it's recommended biology major um, with a chemistry minor. And then there's one year of general physics as well. Yeah, we have about two minutes left. So any other questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat now. Alrighty, so one minute left. Any last questions? Uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Alrighty, so it doesn't look like there are any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and end our session. Uh, to our attendees, thanks for visiting us today, and to our panelists, thanks for taking the time uh, to present. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.